Hi there, it's Jamie Good here, and I want to introduce you to the new edition of my book, Wine Science. This is Wine Science here. This is the UK version, um, pub published by Mitchell Beasley, and it's out now. And there's also the US version called The Science of Wine, which is published by the University of California Press, and that will be out at the beginning of April. Um, so, what's new? Well, quite a lot. The first version was published in 2005, and so it was written in 2004. And since then, that's nearly nine years um, in terms of when this new edition was written. And I've learned a lot since then, and I've incorporated much of that into this book. So it begins with an introduction, Why Wine Science? Um, and really, the, the that's quite similar to the the first edition's introduction. Um, then we move to the vineyard. Um, there's quite a lot of new stuff here, particularly some of the stuff that's come from the research on the molecular biology and the genetics of grapevines, and so that is incorporated into this chapter. Um, um, some of the work by Jose Vumos, um, that's come here as well. Um, chapter 2, Terroir. I've revised this quite a bit. Um, I think that the first edition was, I think the, the chapter was really good, but I think I've learned a lot more about terroir since, and I've kind of softened some of the hard science that was in the last one, um, because I think terroir is a little bit more mysterious um, than than I thought when I wrote the first book. Um, then there's a big chapter, a huge chapter on soils and vines, and this was entirely absent from the first edition, so that's all new. Um, really just thinking about how soils shape flavour. Lots of people have described wine soils in quite a lot of detail, but what I haven't seen a lot of is descriptions of how the, the structure and the geology and the soils um, um, makeup um, could potentially influence the flavour of wine. Um, is it just the water relations, the change in water relations, or is there some chemistry um, effect? Um, so, and, and there's also quite a bit about minerality in here, which is a really interesting subject. Um, but one that's um, quite complex and um, the chapter on precision viticulture has been updated but that's quite similar the chapter on phylloxera I've compressed that quite a bit it was a long one um, and I've added quite a lot of detail about um, the the effect of ungrafted versus grafted vines um, IPM that chapter is more or less the same a bit more added uh, added biodynamics I've, I've rewritten that fairly extensively in light of having met a lot of biodynamic wine growers and chatted to them. Um, pruning, trellis systems, canopy management, again, updated, but not massively different. Then we move into the winery. The first chapter is on oxygen management and wine quality. That's almost entirely new. There's lots of really important stuff there about oxygen. Um, I should also, men also mention one thing, which is that the last edition didn't have any colour pictures, so this one... It's got lots of nice, it's full colour, lots of nice colour pictures. Um, so that oxygen management chapter is new. Um, then red wine making techniques, whole cluster ferments and carbonic maceration. Again, a brand new chapter. Um, I've learned a lot about this. I think it's a really interesting area of red wine making. So we're moving on. Um, oak, yes, there's, um, there's quite a lot that's different about the oak chapter. Um, reverse osmosis, spinning cones, evaporators, alcohol reduction, and must concentration. That has again been updated with the stuff that I've learned since then. Sulfur dioxide, that's kind of the same, apart from um, it's been tightened up a bit. And I've talked about um, Vin Saint Souf, wines without any added sulfur dioxide. Um, chapter 15, reduction volatile sulfur compounds in wine. There's a lot of new stuff in here. Um, I think it's a subject that's. Um, moved on quite a bit since the last edition of the book and I've tried to include the latest research in here. Um, where are we up to now? Microbes and wine, yeast and lactic acid and bacteria. The main difference here has been the, the, um, the comparison between wild yeasts and cultured yeasts um, and also looking at the um, some of Matt Goddard's work on wild yeasts found in the vineyard which I think is really interesting. Um, and there's a, quite a bit more about malolactic fermentation, which is bacteria, not yeast, um, and that's important. Britannomyces, it was an important chapter in the last book, it still is in this book. Um, again, lots more um, stuff added that I've learned since then. 
caught screw caps and closures. Well, this was a really hot topic when um, I wrote the first edition um, nine years ago. Um, but now it's less of a hot topic. We know a bit more, um, but we there's no final answer. And I've really compressed that chapter quite a bit, I've taken lots of boring stuff out and tried to keep it interesting. And also I've focused on um, what I believe to be the key property of closures, which is oxygen transmission. Uh, section three, this is the last section, one of the most interesting, I think, um, looking at our interaction with wine. So there's been two chapters that have been heavily modified and a new chapter altogether. The first one is on flavour and perception, taste and smell in wine tasting. Um, then we look, this is quite a long chapter, at saliva, tannin and mouthfeel. This is completely new and I think it's a really interesting area because we interact um, with wine in our mouths um, and our mouth environment is important for the way that we perceive wine and there are individual differences between the rates of saliva flow and there's a new chapter as well, Synesthesia, Language and Wine, chapter 22. Um, this is something I think is really interesting. The science of language is really interesting. Synesthesia, which is the jumbling up of the senses, again a fascinating topic. Um, so, we're moving towards the end. Wine flavour chemistry. I've learnt lots about this since the last edition, so this is fairly heavily modified with lots of juicy new research included. Wine and health. I've stripped this back quite a lot. Um, unfortunately, there's a limit to how much you can put in a book um, like this, and it's something that I've, I've had to kind of condense, so there's less of that in here, but I think there's some, some solid research. And, and the, there was a chapter in the last one, the final chapter, which is missing altogether. And then we have the concluding remarks, which aren't much changed from the last one. Um, and that's it, really. Um, we've got a glossary at the end and an index. And there you have it. And just a note, these two books, um, um, the cover is much more similar this time, which I hope will remove some of the confusion. It's the same cover, just with the different titles. Because um, last time people came up and asked me, we bought wine science, should we also buy the science of wine? The answer is no, because they're entirely identical, except for the cover and the title. Um, so there you go. This is a brief introduction, but probably a little bit too long for the video, um, to the new edition of Science of Wine. I hope you rush out and buy it. It's available on Amazon. Um, the UK version's out now. If you're in the US, you'll have to wait till the beginning of April. And hopefully it will also be out on Kindle, but we'll wait and see whether the publishers do that or not. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. If you have been watching all the way through to the end, congratulations. Rush out and buy it.